Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Today, we're going back to 2012 and doing a box of Series 1. And I was looking through my Throwback Thursday catalog and I couldn't believe that I've never done this video yet. You can see Roy Halliday is featured on the front of the box. This is a hobby box, so it will have 36 packs with 10 cards per pack. That's the way... These boxes were put together for years until they made the change a few years back to 24 and 14 as the format. So we'll go ahead and bust this open and see what we can find. Hopefully we'll get a nice auto or something like that for our sponsor, which is Brandon Simmons. So Brandon, thank you very much. If you'd like to sponsor a video like this one, check us out on Patreon. We sell all of our spots there for all of our videos. Standalone videos like this one and live streams like Saturday Showdowns and Case Breaks. So, let's check out what we've got. Also, have an auction a little bit later tonight. I hope you can join us for that as well. Let's take all these packs out. We'll tell you a little bit about the set. There's 330 cards in the base set. And uh, we'll probably have much better luck at finding the parallels in this than we would, oh, say, a 2022 pack. Because they were printed a lot less. And look at that. The very first card... It is the Mick, Mickey Mantle, who used to always be card number seven in the set every year. Awesome card right there, Mickey Mantle, when Topps lost the rights to him. Unfortunately, that went bye-bye, and hopefully now that they have the rights back, they'll start doing that again, making him card number seven every year in Series 1. There's Chase Otley. They have the 87 minis in this. Timeless Greats card, Mark Teixeira. Now, in terms of rookie cards, there are 30 Rookie cards in this set, and I would say they are nothing to write home about. There's the back of the base card. Nothing too overwhelming in this. I mean, Liam Hendricks, maybe. You'll see. There's 265 veterans. There's some nice names in here. And there's also some nice inserts. So there's Felipe Paulino, Neil Walker. Hard to imagine. Just 10 years ago, this was out on the shelves, and now most of these guys. There's David Ortiz, Kelvin Herrera, rookie card. Pretty much, probably like 90% of these guys are now retired, if not more. Russell Martin, we've got Tommy Malone, the Tigers team card, Starlin Castro, and Home Run Legends. If you bring this card to your local hobby shop, you can claim a prize. I mean, how cool would that be? They don't do that anymore, unfortunately. I guess they don't really need to. I guess back in 2012, the hobby was... Maybe on life support, not a whole lot of interest in cards back then. That's why it was so much easier to pull parallels because they were printing so much less. In fact, I, I think I've done a box of 2012 jumbos before. I know I did update. And um, with the jumbos, there was like, I think there was three gold cards per pack or something like that. Something ridiculous like that. Let's check this next pack out. Trevor Plouf on the top. Ben Zobris, Golden Moments of CC Sabath. We've got Jason Kipnis, Gold Futures card. That's kind of cool. And there's Michael Taylor, rookie card. We've got George Kateris, former catcher with some pop in batting practice, at least. Chris Coughlin and Josh Hamilton. Speaking of pop, he had a ton of pop. I just uh, unfortunately could not really keep it uh, all together in terms of his personal life and personal demons to uh, just be a... He probably had Hall of Fame talent if he could have just... Just focused only on baseball. There's Yadier Molina. Speaking of Hall of Fame talent, Jose Altuve, second year card. That's a nice one. Carpkin Jr., Golden Greats. And we've got Alcides Escobar. That's going to be a black border card numbered out of 61. So a cool one right there. We'll get that one sleeved up. Chris Parmalee and Teixeira once again. There's Wade Davis. We've got Eric Bedard from back in the day. Jason Wirth without the giant beard in that picture. Avoiding a tag in Javi Guerra. Is the last one in that pack. All right, so I'll tell you what. I kind of actually nowadays, I prefer the 14-card hobby packs, to tell you the truth. When they first made this change a few years back, I can't remember the exact year. It may, may have been 2018 or maybe the beginning of 2019. I, I hated it. I was like, wow, they're ripping us off, taking you know a bunch of packs away from us. But uh, now, don't really mind it all that much. Next pack up, just, um, I guess you just get used to stuff. There's Adam Jones on the back, J. Pierre and Sebia, Joe Saunders, Angel Pagan, Derek Jeter, Johnny Bench, Pineda, Scott Rowland, 
And we've got Alex Avila, Sergio Santos, and Adam Jones is the last one there. So two more packs in this stack. And then after I do these two, I'll probably just do a super rip. My little patented approach to opening stacks makes it go, seemingly go just a little bit faster. There's an 87 Howie Kendrick. We've got the big donkey right there, Adam Dunn. Luke Gregerson, Matt Moore, that's his rookie card. I always thought Matt Moore was going to have a better career than he did. And now we're down to our last pack in stack number one, 36 packs. Derek Jeter with the jump throw on the top. I like that card a lot, Derek Jeter. We've got a Kurt Suzuki. Congratulations, you've unlocked a code for a possible prize. There's an Addison Reed. That code is long since expired, 10 years ago. This was on the shelves, and um, I probably bought a pack of this. I'm going to super rip these right now. I used to buy a pack every single year. I would buy one single pack whenever it would come out in February just to see the new design. And um, whenever I would sell my cars, there would always be like a stack of cards in the glove box from all different years. Kind of cool, I guess. But I stopped collecting probably in 1990, mid-'98. I want to say mid-98 or early 99 to focus on uh, buying a car and going off to college. But I still would buy a pack for probably, oh, like the next 15 years. All right, let's check them out and see if we can find the hit in here now. Got a Jackie Robinson gold moments card. Golden giveaway card once again. Edward Mejica. We've got Adron Chambers rookie card. Right there, there's Ben Revere with the gold cup. Kurt Suzuki, there's Derek Holland yet again. A second sighting of Jason Worth. Jose Tabata, big time failure for the Pirates. There's Albert Pujols, just wrapped up his career. It's, it's it for Albert. Definitely one of the all-time greats. Not even close. He's, uh, he's definitely a hands down. Should be unanimous Hall of Famer. It's uh, not even... <laughs> I should say there's not a lot of people close to Albert Pujols. One of the best of all time. And we have our autograph in our hobby box. It is a Johnny Cueto. So Johnny Cueto is still around. Uh, he, what was he? Uh, like, well, I think he was on like a minor league contract with the White Sox and got called up. So Johnny Cueto with that little Cueto shimmy turned his back. I will always remember seeing Johnny Cueto pitch in the wild card game at PNC Park in 2013. Got a Chipper Jones, by the way. Can't just go right past Chipper without shouting him out. Eduardo Nunez had some good seasons back in this era. You might remember him if you were a Red Sox or Yankees fan. I used to really like Jared Hughes. I can't believe he's retired now. Jared Hughes was a ground ball machine and a very, very kind and a uh, generous individual. He would always take time to talk to the fans in Pittsburgh during batting practice. There's Roy Halladay. He was on the front of the box. Zach Britton, of course, most of you know, unless maybe you're new to the game, that Roy Halladay, Hall of Famer, passed away in a uh, very unfortunate aviation accident. We've got Marion Rivera, all-time saves leader, best ever. That's an awesome card right there. Take a look at that. That should be like a poster or something in a man cave with, Got Rivera there with Jeter. Got uh, Jorge Posada right there. Andrew Jones. Some big-time talent on that card. That was during the farewell tour. Albert Pujols once again. Got a Drew Pomeranz rookie card. Sean Markham. I always love how these cards flip every which way. Hey, Craig Kimbrell, he's still around. Maybe he'll write himself for the playoffs and regain that closer role with the Dodgers. Been a little bit rocky for him, and uh, there is R.A. Dickey. We really need to bring back a knuckleballer. I feel like baseball needs a regular knuckleballer. There's Craig Kimbrell doing the Kimbrell stare. Matt Cain, Luke Scott, good old Rex Brothers. There's Matt Kemp, who was uh, robbed. If you look at the stats on the back of his card, absolutely robbed. Lots of red ink on the back of the card for his 2011 season. There's Calvin Jr., Came in second for the MVP to Ryan Braun in 2011. And uh, right after the voting, it came out that uh, Braun was juicing, using testosterone and taking PEDs. And then a whole saga unfolded with Braun saying that uh, his sample had been tampered with and yada, yada, yada. And it was just not a very good time for baseball. 
at least revolving around that whole award. And uh, Ryan Braun's, I guess, image, I don't think it ever bounced back. He's still a pretty popular guy in Milwaukee. He's now retired, by the way. But uh, Matt Kemp, he's gone as well. Man, it's amazing. I think the average baseball career, if you factor in everybody, it's probably about three years, maybe not, not even, maybe a little less. All these guys that come up. And just, uh, they appear for a little while like Brennan Bosch. I used to think he was going to be a big-time star because of his power, but just couldn't put it all together. There's Liam Hendricks' rookie card. That's actually one of the better, if not the best, rookie card in this set for Series 1. We got Jason Bourgeois, which is just a tough name to pronounce. There's Chris Sale. I wonder how much more he has left. Martin Rivera, that I believe is Mo's final. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe either final or next-to-last ever card. Dylan Batonze's rookie card, he's another one that's retired now. Had some really nice seasons there, but then it just kind of got away from him. Tom Gorzolani, I look at him. <laughs> Tom Gorzolani's a pitcher, and he's bowling over the catcher. Those days are long gone. There's Nolan Ryan, absolute gamer right there. Gold standard card, Paul O'Neill. Used to love Paul O'Neill. O'Neill Cruz, the Pirates' um, top young star, is actually named after Paul O'Neill, which is pretty cool. His dad was a big Paul O'Neill fan. There's a Hank Aaron, Golden Greats, Devin Mezzarocco. That's a rookie card. Eric Ibor. We've got Unieski Betancourt. Jeff Keppinger, former Pirates farmhand right there. He's another guy no longer in the big leagues. Cal Blanks was a huge dude. Another guy, another huge dude right there, Michael Morse. Cal Blanks never really got it all together. Stalling Castro. That just goes to show you that all these prospects and stuff, all these rookies... Most of them fail. There's a couple, very few, that end up being mega, mega stars. I hope that J-Rod's going to be one of them. But most of them, they fail in the long run. I mean, look at this Look at this entire set here. There is no notable rookie in this entire Series 1 set out of the 30 rookies. I would say, I wouldn't call them all failures, but uh, value-wise, maybe the most expensive one might cost you a quarter. There's Jim Tomey. He's a Hall of Famer. Got Mark Reynolds, which people used to say that I look a little bit like Mark Reynolds. I'd say if there's a baseball player to be your doppelganger, it would be Mark Reynolds. I took that as a compliment because Reynolds had a ton of power, and I respected that power. He used to strike out a ton, but uh, I thought he was I thought he was pretty nice. Daniel Bard is still around. How about him remaking his career? He totally retired from baseball because he just could not find the strike zone anymore. Almost 10 years away from the game, then got it back and came back with the, I think, Rockies and signed a 30, was it a $31 million extension to be their closer? So hats off to Daniel Bard, one of the few players in this checklist that is actually still around today and playing the big leagues. And Max Scherzer's another one. You're going to see his card coming up. Max Scherzer, I think is a slam dunk surefire Hall of Famer. All right, so let's see what we've got going on for Brandon in this stack. We already got our autograph, but who knows? Maybe they'll toss another one in here. There's Miggy, another surefire slam dunk Hall of Famer. Joe DiMaggio right there, who has a record that may never be touched. I think uh, I think all records are made to be broken. Now, that one seems to be pretty tough. 56 consecutive games with a hit. The Joe DiMaggio rookie. There's other records that are, I think, much tougher to reach. Such so as Cy Young's 511 wins or Cal Ripken Jr.'s consecutive game streak. But uh, that's going to be a tough one, 56 consecutive. It's so tough that they have that beat the streak game on MLB. They've been doing it for years, and millions of people have played it. And no one has ever beaten the streak. So if uh, you know people can't beat it by picking whatever player they want, uh, it just kind of goes to show you how tough it's going to be. That have that happen ever again. There's Scott Downs. DiMaggio that season won the MVP award and actually beat uh, Ted Williams at 406 the same year. So pretty crazy. Miggy, that's a golden moments card right there. We've got Willene Rosario. David Robertson. There's Mitch Moreland as we wind down this box. Joey Bats. I was always a huge Joey Bats fan. I caught his 10th career home run ball when he was a youngster with the Pirates. And ever since, I felt like... Me and him, um, you know, we have that link. We got a Alfredo Simon, Bob Gibson, Brett Gardner, 87 tops mini, Steve Lombardozzi, 
Nice utility man. Brett Wallace had a ton of power, but never really got it all together. Michael McKendry was a Pirates folk hero. And there's Max Scherzer. Mad Max with the two different color eyes doing his thing. And he's going to be a Hall of Famer for sure. And Freddie Freeman, I think, is going to be a Hall of Famer as well when it's all said and done. That's his second year card. John Lester, great career. He just hung him up. I don't think John Lester will be a Hall of Famer, but, you know, he's in the Hall of Very Good in my book. Zach Granke, still around. I think he's a Hall of Famer. There's Brooksy. We got a Mike Trout Gold Future card. How about Mike Trout? 40 home runs this year. What do you play, 119 games, something like that? Despite the injury where he missed a substantial amount of time in the middle of the season and scared us all with that prognosis about his back, he still had 40 home runs this season, and that is his third career best, third third uh, highest ever for Trout. So if he can stay healthy for a full year, I'd love to see Trout hit 50-plus next year, and you know that will definitely go a long way in the value of his card. So great card right there. Brandon, thank you very much for sponsoring this video. There you have it, folks. That's Throwback Thursday. I hope you'll check us out in a little bit. We'll have a live auction for you. And um, we'll have Saturday showdown this weekend. And I have a big collection of Justin Harris cards. I'm not, not set on what day I'm going to do them yet. But I'll let you know I'd like to do them Sunday. But we'll see because uh, my schedule is uh, very, very packed with fall sports right now. Six kids doing sports. It's a lot of running around, but it's fun. So um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. And I'll see you all later in the auction. Good night, everybody.